We're back, baby. Welcome back to the Bunker to Bunker podcast. I have been on a hiatus, uh, traveling the world, finally back and situated. Um, life's been crazy, but back to normal for a little bit. Recording this right after the end of the Travelers. Pretty eventful finish, to say the least, um, especially with the Just Stop Oil protesters, which we talked about for a while, um, changing the whole going into the playoff. But yeah, before I get into that, Josh, how's life? How are things? Yeah. Damn, you really just took over. I thought I would have to do like the first, you know, saying hello, friends, because I, I didn't think you would remember what we kind of like say on this podcast. So, oh, um, come on. It's you. not been that long. It's not been that long. Come on. It's been that long. It's been um, right, whatever. I think it's been since April, probably. Players. Yeah, probably April. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot in golf has been going on, so glad to have you back. I mean, Appreciate what a way to come to back. back. What a way to come what, back. Like, what a way to come back on the podcast. I mean, I mean, let's just dive right into it. Um, this was not our plan. We wanted to do something else for this, but then the last half hour, we're like, how do we not talk about the Travi? Uh, so kind of my thoughts today, uh, going into today, is that like, I was on the Tomkin train. He, Liked him going into this tournament. I didn't bet him to win. I had him in a daily fantasy lineup, which did like okay. But like, I had mixed feelings about the Travelers because it's such a easy golf course. It's that you just hit it to twenty feet, and whoever makes like the most putts is going to win. Yeah. But then I sat back and I was like, these crowds were amazing. Like my dad was telling me on eighteen, I was like, how much better can this get on like the eighteenth hole? So. Kind of my whole thing is I've been going back and forth. Like, do I like the Travelers or not? And even though it's like a birdie fest, it produces these, like, playoffs. It produces mm-hmm. these huge crowds. Gets, like, into it. Obviously, these, like, protesters thought that this was the right tournament for them just to spray paint onto the green and try to disrupt Sky Shuffler and Tom Kim, which we all know Sky Shuffler's history with the police and, and the law. But kind of overall... I've, like, kind of changed my feelings on, like, the Travelers. I was kind of out at first, but now I'm just, like, right back in. And I feel like that's what the PJ Tour and the, and professional golf has really done all year round. So those were my big picture thoughts. Obviously, we'll get into, the like, what happened on the 18th hole. Um, talk about Scheffler, Tom Kim, and, uh, you know, players. But, I mean, the Tour can ask for a better finish than that with – two of the stars of golf. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's uh <laughs> there there there's a lot there's a lot to discuss and a lot to kind of debrief here, but yeah, my my thing about the Travelers is it's probably been my favorite tournament um outside of, you know, the the majors or the players waste management purely because, you know, yes, the course is a birdie fest, but also it's just a very unique course, especially I love the finishing hole. So you have the 15th, the drivable, you know, Ricky Fowler put it to what, two inches today. Yeah. That's always a fun one. If you're bored on a Thursday or Friday morning, just throwing on, you know, featured hole coverage there and just sit back and watch it. Cause you can attack that hole any which way hit, you know, three wood driver, three yeah. two iron, whatever. And then going into 16 with the, with the water on the right and then 18 or 17 with the tough tee shot water on the right coming off again. And then 18 is always a fun hole because, you know, if you smack it out there, you have a good wedge in, as Tom Kim showed. But, yeah, I, I, I guess a question for you um, just about kind of everything that happened. I mean, everyone who, who knows golf probably is aware of what happened on 18 with uh, four or six or however many protesters wearing yeah. no golf on a dead planet T-shirts, running down with powder, throwing it on the green. It's a big thing in Europe, just stop lower protesters, you know, spray okay. painting. It's it's a huge thing. They're you know whatever they actually did it at the U.S. Open last year. Three guys glued right. their feet to the um to the cement. That was really fun. <laughs> and it's like basketball courts too. Like they did it at like yeah basketball yeah courts, so. yeah. But um, that NBA. was when, when I was working there, and I actually became really good friends with the guy who was like the head of security. So watching him just go from like casual vibe to just absolute stress was hilarious. Um, you don't yeah. plan for someone gluing themselves. Whatever. Anyway, does everything that happened, you know, uh, the, the stress of the situation, not going through your routine and all that, and then especially changing the hole, you know, changing, cutting out a new hole. 
Right. Do you think that affected Tom or do you think just more of the, the pressure of the moment, not really the changing of the whole kind of thing? I mean, I don't think the whole really had much to do with anything, to be honest. I mean, it was 11 and then 11 front and then five off the right. Yeah, I don't know what it was originally, bef- originally before. It's a very similar whole position. I just thought mm-hmm. that Tom hit such a good shot on 18. Um, I thought what Paul Sorry told Tom Kim, he's like, do you have your, like, juices flowing? He said, like, yeah, I do. And then Paul, to some extent, was like, just go, like, attack this pin. Just go, like, right at it. He did it. He twirls, like, his club, almost holds out, and then, you know, has, what, like, eight feet, I think, maybe ten feet, mm-hmm. uh, to tie. So I think that interaction was just pretty sick. I think with what Tom Kim, the high of that moment, I mean, he also, like, not many players can say they beat Sky Shuffler in 2024. Mm-hmm. Tom Kim yeah. and him are, like, best friends. They share, like, the same birthday. They eat, like, pizza from, like, New Haven here. Perfect. And they're probably staying at, like, at, like, the same house. So they have this whole connection. And I think that I think that connection of that he's so close to beating his close friend, maybe, like, uh, probably, like, a brother to him. I think that got in the way on 18 when he put it in the bunker, which is basically a fried egg, more than, like, the whole. But I also think that probably did have to do with it, but I think that kind of the storyline that I went over probably had more to do with Tom Kim's mistake um, than these protesters, which is I, I just still can't, you know, get over. Yeah, it's it's interesting, though, because, you know, you think about in a playoff, right, you have someone like Tom Kim who birdies, who hits that, you know, great shot to eight or ten feet. I mean, you would almost kind of say the advantage was with him if they were playing that hole again, purely because, you know, if he hits his drive to a similar spot, he's already pulled off that shot before. So that's always kind of saying, you know, does the whole being cut in a new place kind of affect it a little bit more, make it, you know, maybe more in favor of Scotty because, you know, Tom is now going back to the tee essentially playing a totally different hole than the one he just birdied from. So right. never, I, don't, I don't know if it's ever happened before in the PGA Tour. I couldn't tell you if it has because uh, it's just such an obscure thing. I mean, maybe it has on like a Monday uh, finish or something like that. But. I, it probably hasn't. I mean, I feel like what else could happen if like, I don't even know, like in my professional golf. But I, yeah, what I, I thought was that. really interesting that – Colt Nose said it on the broadcast, is that Scheffler has been taking three wood. He took it on 18, like the first 18, and then during the playoff, he hit also a three wood, and he was saying how it's an advantage for Tom Kim because he's closer to the hole, but it's an advantage for Scheffler that he's hitting first. And if Absolutely. you're Sky Scheffler and you're like, what, nine times out of ten, he's going to put it within 12 feet from like one, like 40. I thought that, was that his... Was that his, like, strategy just on that hole? But then I went back and was like, he hit three wood on the first 18. So that was, like, his whole like, game plan. So, obviously, added more pressure to Tom Kim uh, mm-hmm. on, on the uh, like, playoff hole. But I think overall, I think when Tom Kim said, like, he hasn't really had anything. Like, you have to be elite of the elite to beat Sky Shuffler, and he gave it his all. And he lost on a playoff hole in that fashion. I mean, the kid's AF star. I mean, we'll get into what I think his, not career can go, but maybe for the President's Cup in September. But overall, I think just it just adds to like the PJ Tour and how mm-hmm. crazy 2024 has been with everything going on. And that was kind of our podcast that we we're going to do today about like the, like what, like, where is professional golf right now after, what, we're 75% through, like, the whole year? That's what's kind of my thing. This kind of adds to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it kind of makes this year even, like, better. But overall, great tournament, great Travi. Yeah. Those are kind of yeah, I guess Yeah, I guess it doesn't hurt to, to kind of talk about your question for a couple minutes. Where is the state of professional golf? And I actually yeah. think it's actually in a pretty good state, you know, at least in, in, in my eyes. I don't know about about you but i i'm just kind of not even paying attention to the whole feud between the pga and live it's just kind of like we've been dealing with it for what a year now and it just kind of gotten to the point of like it just doesn't 
you know, I don't, I don't know what the word is, just doesn't really matter anymore, at least in my eyes. You know, we've kind of established that Liv doesn't seem like it's going anywhere at the moment. Now, again, with the merger that might may or may not happen, you never know. But, you know, it, it's still kind of the same reoccurring things. You know, you see your your name, John Rahm's drone. You know, he had the issue <laughs> with the drone today in Nashville. You know, you have the music blaring in the background. Like, Liv is still a joke of a tournament. But it's just kind of gotten to the point of it's just not worth being, you know, trying to draw a line in, in the feud between the two. And yeah, coming off of Bryson's win, I wouldn't say it was like a unifier between the two, but how Bryson absolutely went to live, got whatever his signing bonus was, whatever the figure was, and became instantly more popular than he was on the PJ Tour should be like a model for, for everyone trying to clear up their PR image. Patrick Reed should learn from him, especially. But yeah, just someone like Bryson, who is just so loved by the fans, you know, through his YouTube, through his just engagement overall. I don't say like he's being the unifier right now, but he's kind of helping the game kind of get back to, you know, like a normalcy state, if that makes any sense in my yeah. eyes. Um, so that's what I'd say. That's what I'd say the state of it all so far. Yeah. I mean, at some point we'll deep dive in to this more in a longer mm-hmm. form podcast because I have a ton of takes that can go off. But I think that the state of golf, I think it's in a better state than it was to start like the year. Obviously mm-hmm. when, all these signature events to start were just like the nobodies. It was like what the long shots. It was like the Nick Dunlaps and the Pavone and the, yeah. I think Grayson Murray won, you know, like the Sony Open. Mm-hmm. So like, you have all these like different like long shots to start. And then Sheffler kind of makes this uh, like run and then he wins like the players. And I feel like the players is kind of like the catapult that just started the whole year of golf to make it what it is now. And the one thing that, I wanted to bring up in the pod with you all later on in another thing is that like the PJ tour, I was trying to like, I was going to like rank, like what were the top tournaments this like year? Mm-hmm. And you can argue like, Oh, I'll say like the players is in like the top five, but you know, the PJ, you know, the PJ championship was better. The U S open was better. I probably put players number three travelers is probably like four now. And what people don't understand is that the PJ tour doesn't own the majors. Like their major is is like is the, the players, so I think in the like if you talk about all of like professional golf, I think it's in a better place than it was because these tournaments are a lot like better, and Bryson is doing what he's doing to bring kids even younger than us. We're both twenty four. Mm-hmm. We needed like you know fans of golf younger than us to watch golf on a consistent like, basis. So I think with all those different like, factors is that it's kind of troubling. Like the, the Peter Tour still has a problem, but professional golf I think is in a better place. Just to conclude this whole thought is that I like no one really cares about the whole live and PJ Tour thing. It's just like golf's kind of turning into like kind of. I know you're like a tennis fan, but it seems like there's only four tournaments that really matter in golf, which is a problem, but also well a, a problem for like, the PJ Tour. But I still think it's good because you get to yeah. build that hype, and especially with with like Scotty's year, he's built that hype. Um, obviously, yeah, you can go a, into all these yeah. different directions, but go ahead. In a in a perfect world, the golf fan would want to see a return to where, you know, you have these tournaments every week, and you know, there's so many people who can play in them. You know, we're not just focused on these signature events or or all this stuff. I mean, I was talking with someone at my club the other day of how difficult it is all of a sudden to make a a decent living in golf if you're not in, you know, like the top 100, top 150. I'm um, not saying it was easy, you know, five years ago, but with, you know, these signature events and these, and these no cut events being so difficult to get into, I miss the days of where most of the PGA Tour events wide open, full field, 156. You know, Monday qualifiers are paid more attention to. I feel like those outside of the US Open qualifiers, yeah. which aren't even on Mondays, have fallen apart. So yeah, I, I, I wish those days would come back. And the best way to say that is if the Corn Ferry Tour got more funding and that could take off because that would kind of um, give us that. I mean, look at like Harry Higgs. He's won, what, twice there already? You know, foreign PJ yeah. Tour member. Hopefully in a perfect world, we can have that come back into golf and it's not this big money, you know, money thing or whatever you want to call yeah. it for all the players, which it, I don't want to say it rightfully should be, but you understand where they're coming from. You know, money makes the world go around, so it makes sense. But um, I wish we could bring back where, 
know, yeah, I mean, it'll be flash, interesting yeah. to see where this, what, $3 billion that, like, the Family Sports Group and Steve mm-hmm. Cohen and Arthur Blank and all these rich people, because, like, they're not investing in the tour just to give yeah. $3 billion to, like, the tour just to burn. Like, mm-hmm. they're going to want to make, like, a profit off this. They don't want just mm-hmm. to, like, net even. So, yeah. I, it'll be in, like, that is and also a big question mark is, like, what is that money going towards? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, like you can keep, like, paying these players, but in, 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 like, the end, like, you need to improve the product somehow, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like. So that's still a million-dollar question, but kind of wanted to kind of talk about, like, Sky Shuffler's 2024 year and kind of – so this is, like, his sixth win on the PJ Tour, mm-hmm. and Arnold Palmer is the only player – Besides Scotty now, to have six wins before July 1st, and that was since yep. 1960, and he did that, and he did that twice. And then mm-hmm. the other players who win six or more times on the tour were Tiger, Nick Price, and BJ Singh in a mm-hmm. calendar year, and he's also won 27 million dollars this year mm-hmm. and counting. Mm-hmm. So three historic levels of golf from Scotty. Obviously, the career earnings is a lot. Like different for this um, year. I think he's won like seven. I forget like the number of how much he's won in his like in his career. But he's on the present to just shatter those like records. But honestly, skewed. Kind of a question I have for you is like, is the Scheffler like him being this like dominant? Is it good for golf or is it like not great for golf? It depends on how you look at it. You know, when when I'm thinking of Scheffler's dominance. I don't know if you're an F1 fan at all, but you think of like Max Verstappen's dominance in F1, right? It's it, it's that like good problem to have almost where you have such a dominant athlete who's so good, who, you know, does draw in fans, does draw in money. Um, but then at the same time, like you're not, obviously you're not giving chances for other people to win, but you know, that's kind of what's happening. Yeah. I, I kind of think it helps the game purely because you look at how much Tiger did for the game, you know, coming in, you know, winning week in, week out. And you haven't had some of that dominance since Tiger. I know Scotty's still, I don't want to say ways off. I mean, he's getting close to Tiger level dominance, but Mm -hmm. I I, I think in terms of just growing the game, it it doesn't hurt to have someone who is so good at what he does. So, you know, I don't want to say like a, just like a nice individual as well to go with it. It's not like he's a bad boy image or something. It's bringing really good publicity to golf because you're having, you know, people talk about, Oh, this Scotty Scheffler's guy, he's won, you know, X, Y, and Z. He's doing this, he's doing that. You know, he's plus 300 to win a major or whatever. Like, it's, it's, it adds a different element. Overall, I'd rather see someone like Scotty be dominant than every week it's someone, you know, who, who is winning, right. who's, you know, two or three hundredth in the world. So, overall, I, I think it's, it's good for the game. That would be my thoughts on it. Yeah, I definitely agree. I would say that him, Winning, you know, in, like, these close battles is, like, great for golf, obviously. I think he won with API by a couple strokes, and then he kind of pulled away at, like, the Masters after the 11th and 12th hole when Colin, Homa, and Aubert kind of, like, screwed up. So that tournament, but, like, it was still, like, very close. Also, the players, he comes back to, uh, to win that, and then he kind of did this with, uh, like, Tom Kim. So I think... He just draws in all these different storylines. You have, like, Dave Portnoy now, who bet, I think he won, like, 300K today. I think he put, like, 180K down to win, like, 300. So you have, like, people that don't watch the regular PJ Tour events are now watching these now. Um, maybe, like, the stats don't really show it, but if you just go on Twitter in, like, the sports like media space, like, there are more people who are putting their money on – you know, Duffler to win or any other things from that sense. So I think it's definitely a good thing for golf. Obviously, it helps that. I think the best thing to happen in golf in 2024 was him getting handcuffed. And Absolutely. In Absolutely. Kentucky, uh, I had different opinions on that just based on – I could only think of when we had the championship director on, um, and he's in charge of outside like the ropes. Yeah. When I saw that, I was like – Dude, like, I can yeah. imagine what he's thinking. He said, it all, you know, obviously it all turned out fine. It wasn't in his mm. control. We'll have him back on and maybe get go it, through get those, like, yeah. couple hours. So 
I think that helps too, but I think overall Shepherd's dominance helps golf. It puts them on a map and I'd really like to see like how many people did tune in today. Um because golf also started at like eleven o'clock AM. Like I remember mm-hmm. I texted you, I was like, I think when this po- like when we do our podcast they'll probably be over. And you're like, hmm. what? And I was like, oh, because like, they like, have to like start early because of like the holy forecast. So hopefully that also helps. But overall, Shuffler's a great dude, great golfer. Mm-hmm. And I think he's great for golf. Yeah, I can't wait to see when he does his media obligations, if any journalist throws out uh, the idea of asking him what his thoughts were when he saw cops running at him. I don't know. <laughs> it's not going to be asked, but that would be a really funny qu- I saw that on Twitter like right after – the protest happened i just burst out in laughter um because that uh, that would be a funny one to figure out um what do you think yeah it's it's uh it's one of those things where like when you're talking about you know scotty getting arrested what was a really good thing it's just like those funny publicity mo- or you know publicity moments um that create no harm but only more eyes on golf are good things right yeah you don't want scandals you don't want this but like just stupid funny stuff like that um, you know, probably drew in insane viewership for that Friday morning. Um, and these so. and these like protesters also help the cause. Yeah, which I guess that's why they protest because. But also picking like the travelers is so weird, but whatever. Like you can yeah. do like another tournament, but I guess it's you know Cromwell, Connecticut. I guess like a big like market. It's, or, it, not, I don't yeah. think it has anything to do with that personally. It's just you know who's ever. I don't say, I guess I could say stupid enough to agree to do it. Because again, I don't know what the necessary legal ramifications of these are. I'd assume it's at least banned from all golf events. And what I've seen is sometimes if you get banned from one sport league, you get banned from all sport leagues. And then I'm assuming there's some sort of trespassing charges. But outside of that, like you're not really facing crazy, you know, jail time or anything. It's probably lengthy fines and all these bans. So. Yeah, it, it's just, I don't think they pick the Travelers because it's in Cromwell or because it's, you know, yeah. signature event or anything. I just think they found four to six or however many it was idiots who have said they'll do it, basically. Yeah. Um, he, like, you really can't make it up. Like, no, you just I, can't, you can't it's, make it up. Un, it's just unbelievable and just puts more eyes on golf and uh, it's more people are talking about it. So they're just helping you know, the whole sport. So, but kind of one thing I, I did want to say, because I do want to put this on the record. Uh, I've been thinking about the President's Cup. I'm a golf sicko. The President's Cup isn't even close to the magnitude as the Ryder Cup. But I think this year is going to be pretty interesting about who gets picked and stuff, which I actually kind of want to do a, a podcast on that maybe next month or so to kind of take preview and kind of get, you know, our like, thoughts on it. But I... If there's a bet out there, there's no bet on this, but I would say that I am guaranteeing that it's going to be Sky Scheffler and Tom Cam the first out on Sunday mm-hmm. singles. Because I was talking to my brother about this at the airport. Actually, when I was flying back from Lisbon to the States, like last week, where we went through who we would pick for like the President's Cup. But then I was like, Sky Scheffler is so good. And I'll say it depends on what the score is on Sunday. I was kind of thinking, like, do you just, like, punt that? Like, you know Sky Shuffler is going to go out, like, first. So, like, if you're the captain, like, I think it's, like, where do you just put out, like, your, like, worst guy? Because, like, you know, like, like Shuffler is going to beat whoever. Mm-hmm. It's kind of, like, a loser mentality. But then I think seeing this tournament and how Tom Kim, like, went up against Sky Shuffler, and Tom Kim, I think, is becoming the face of, like, their team and stuff, is, I think, the President's Cup is going to, you know, will probably be up, and I think Shuffler will be, like, the first one out, and I think the only person that probably has any confidence to try to beat Sky Shuffler is Tom Kim, so I just want to put that out there. That was my mm-hmm. thought, so I think Tom Kim, Sky Shuffler will be the first one out. Uh, the President's Cup, for all that, it's not worth much, but... I just want to put that on camera. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting that you bring up about punting, um, you know, throwing out someone who's clearly yeah. going to get crushed. Because I was thinking, like, you know, captains just don't do that for whatever reason. They they should, but they don't. And then I realized, wouldn't you call Scotty Scheffler versus John Rahm out in Whistling Straits a punt? They just threw Scotty out there and he beat John Rahm. I mean, that was well, not expected. 
Well, the all. thing is, with the Ryder Cup, it's blind. You're correct. So pre- you're correct. President's Cup, right. you go back and forth. So that's so, so right. that's what I'm saying. Like, it, like it, it's a punt on. The, I I don't know who goes first because it's like home and away. I'm not sure who go. I'm not sure what the advantage is. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm not really sure, but I'm but I said that because the President's Cup, you go like back and forth, and the Ryder Cup's like one through twelve. But like you also get a sense of like who's going. You know, mm-hmm. like first, obviously, if you're down a lot, you know, you're going to put out, like, Rory, Hovlin, Rahm, and all of those, like, big names. I mean, obviously, Scheffler went out first last year, and they knew that, and then they put John Rahm there. Cause, like, they, they kind of knew that was going to happen, because, like, we needed to, like, come back. So, mm-hmm. kind of, like, depending on how it goes, but, yeah, that's just kind of my thoughts. I mean, they're not going to punt, but if there's anything, if there's anyone to do it against, it's him, but I just think Tom Kim kind of showed everything to the captain that was like, hey, like, if you want to send, like, a message out, put Tom Kim against, you know, Scott Sheffer, because I think even, like, half a point is, like, a dub versus Scott Sheffer. Yeah. But cool. those are all my yeah. thoughts. I mean, well, we also had Cam Young was the 13th PJ Tour player to shoot a 59, which is ridiculous because he only hit, like, six fairways. And I think yeah. that that kind of shows you everything about the, the, the course because if you shoot if you hit six fairways you're usually not going to shoot a 59 mm-hmm. uh so yeah. it was kind of just like a target golf i know that he like hold out and then he put one to what like five feet on 15 i believe so pretty impressive stuff there too and um and when i guess you also mentioned john rom going at the drone which i thought was like the funniest thing i was like dude uh-huh. like stop complaining uh, I, you know, Rom, I'm not gonna bring up. Rom looks. I'm gonna throw something. Rom looks miserable on the. I I think yeah. most people. I've been saying. Agree with that. I think I I posted many clips and like fade Rom. He's miserable. I have wrote that on Twitter. I, I don't need to go there again. But yeah, yeah, he looks miserable. Uh, and especially after he said like I like he still thinks he is like a part of like, the PJ Tour. I'm like, dude, you're not a part of like, the PJ Tour. You took like the bag. Um, yeah, and I think yeah. that really shows I mean, like. Again. You don't blame him. You don't blame him for taking the money. I would take the money, too. I mean, honestly. I mean, we're also in different financial states that he's on. <laughs> I mean, yeah. he I mean, he. He also, I think it really shows, like, money can't buy, like, happiness. Exactly. Guy's got $400 million. Yes, he does play less golf, um, which I think has helped, like, Bryson um, mm-hmm. to grow his brand outside or, you know, on social media. Rom just... You know, he loves these, like, stuff, but th- that's another pod we can do. But uh, those are all of my thoughts. I know that we kind of want to make this a little quick hitter on Pravi. Kind of in, like, the dark times of golf with, you got, like, the market mortgage, John Deere, which is, like, the fifth major in golf. You got, like, the 3M. Scottish Open before, which will be pretty good. Uh, a mm-hmm. lot of players playing that. And then we have the British Open. So definitely, I'm definitely trying to plan out who to get on and stuff to prep for the British Open and stuff. I'll try to do another giveaway. Again, the first giveaway did pretty well. Shout out to John Nucci, which a lot of people know who he is. He's kind of like the sports lawyer guy on Twitter. He went to Penn State. We had him on to kind of talk about mm-hmm. the Peter Tour program that they rolled out, that the players are getting stake in the tour. So shout out to him. Uh, he's, he's become a good friend of mine online, going like back and forth with him. So maybe... Mm-hmm. Have him on soon. But yeah, we'll see another... I'll try to do something else. Because we also got some stuff on our end that we can give out to the fans. Because um, I got some pretty good like feedback on that. A lot of people weren't happy that they did not get the Sky Shuffler balls, which is a pretty good sign. So Yeah, yeah. You should, uh, you should do something with the powder. With the travelers and the powder. I don't know what we could do, but that'd be kind of funny. We could get that. Someone that should idea. go onto the green and like pick up like the powder yeah, and the try powder. to like, sell it yeah, on like, eBay. Yeah. I'm surprised no one did that. That'd be funny. We should, you know, we should give away the shirt that they were wearing. No golf on a dead planet. That's what we should do. They should give that out and put a logo on it. That should be like a. If we did some sort of like competition for this year, the loser has to like wear that shirt at like you know at like a tournament. Or something. Oh my! So that no, do, go go to the travelers but, next year wearing it. That's that's what we should do. Dude, like I would have gone, but I got back from Europe. Like last weekend, and I just didn't want to like travel out to Cromwell, Connecticut, yeah. in New York, and like train out there. I just 
it wasn't worth it. But yeah, exciting stuff coming up. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Well, yeah. Stay tuned for exciting stuff. Busy month of June, as always. Um, yeah. Thank you for this. Glad to have you back. Yeah. Appreciate it. Happy to be here. All right. See ya.